Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to talk about something that is really important to me and has really changed my life, and that is Jinkum. There's a new way for your kids to get high. They're using raw sewage. I couldn't imagine doing something like that. It sounds pretty sick to me. Honestly, mm-hmm. they need to find something better to do with their life. <laughs> Seriously? Something new, something stimulating, something different. There's a lot of people that say it's a hoax or it's not real or it's just made up or whatever. Now let's just get this out of the way first, you know, so you can laugh it all off or whatever, you know. You won't be laughing once you experience what I have and have your life change. But, um, it's human waste. It's, you know, shit. Hey, we're here with a live Jankum, which we don't always do, but uh, we're here with my buddy, Mike Keegan. What's up, dude? Josh, how are you, man? Glad to be here. I'm doing good. Let's let's talk to each other like we haven't been talking for 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, I my was, God, you look great. Ah, dude. yeah. It's you know, lighting and, and uh, high definition, right? That's how it works. <laughs> I, um, I pointed out I thought it was so funny. So we bonded a lot of uh, people that don't know. You uh, you ended up coming in and bailing out uh, our buddy. Um, oh, my God. Now I'm drawing a blank on his name. J- Jonas, Jonas Barnes. Yeah, Jonas. Yeah, there. Jonas. Uh, and and opening for me when we did the Wilmington shows back at uh, in, in end of April, beginning of May. And, what a weekend! Uh, that was. Yeah. And I felt like we. I was like uh, when we met, that was the instantaneous. I was like, yes, yeah, it's going to be a good weekend. Yeah. And I, I tell you, and, exactly, as soon as I walked through the door, because you know what it was, I I wanted to do the shows. I had the open weekend. And I didn't want to drive there and back. And you were like, all right, yeah, it's cool. I got a room. You can stay with me. I'm like, I don't, I don't know who I'm walking into. Like, I don't know how we're going to hit it off. As soon as I open the door, I'm just like, Oh my God, we're going to eat. We're, we're going to eat. Home. Yeah. yeah we're exactly. home. This is, the this other, is right. The other thing that's so great about it too, it is like we, we find out throughout the course of the weekend how much we have in common. And, yeah. uh, and then the funny thing is, is like, you come on to do the show today. They go, look, we both have like a couple of fake Dagos. We both have <laughs> prints of, fo- of, of paintings with gold frames in the background of our show. Yeah. Um, how could I, how could I, how could I class up my piece of shit? Let me go get this printed Thomas Kincaid uh, fucking pr- picture. Exactly. Exactly. Is that what that is, Thomas Kincaid? I see. I wouldn't even know because I'm not yeah. cultured. <laughs> this is a Thomas Kincaid, the artist of light. Oh, okay. Yeah, mine is a Monet. Uh, it's a vanilla sky print, <laughs> which I which I got when I was in my 20s, and I was working in at, the, at a video store. Um, <laughs> I was working for Hollywood Video, and I loved the movie Vanilla Sky because I thought I was like, man, it's so crazy how basically all of this horrible shit that was happening to him was just in his mind. And <laughs> a spoiler alert, if you haven't seen this movie from 20 years ago, but, um, <laughs> and I was like, you know, it, it, I, I would love to have that painting as a reminder to like, uh, understand that most of the negative shit or the things you perceive in your life negatively, um, uh, you know, it's just in your mind. And I was like, it'll be good. I'll just hang that and then I'll look at it. And then, it'll, and it's like when people say that their tattoos have meanings, I don't ever look at the fucking painting. It does not yeah, ever never, serve never the purpose. I don't I'm never having a bad day. And I go, let me just like, go look at the painting. Like that never yeah. happens. But people walk in and see the painting and like, oh, this guy's not as big a piece of shit as I thought he was. Yeah. And then of course, like what you don't see behind my head is my uh, Sopranos posters that are also framed. Uh, because again, I'm like a full nineties Guinea. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I used to have a leather couch and then the girlfriend made me get rid of it because she just doesn't (laughs) understand, you know, nineties, what, what stuff was like in the nineties. It's so funny. You say that though. Cause I do my pod, I do podcast in two rooms, either this room or the one that I have downstairs, which has a Sopranos framed fucking picture down there. (laughs) I swear to God. We're the same dude. We are really the same person. Just fucking all the way. We had a good weekend that weekend, man. We uh, we ate uh, like a couple of fucking fat <laughs> pigs. It was just, it was so much ridiculous eating. Like it, the first night just started off with us in a hotel room at two in the morning eating a bucket of French fries. Oh, was a it a tub? Egg. I think they called it. It was a tub. I think they called it a tub. Yeah, the cheese steak. People like all right. 
but there was a literal tub of fries. Yeah, and then I think somebody, I don't know if they said this to me or you at the uh, throughout the weekend, but somebody goes, when you guys were telling the story about the tub of fries, for some reason I literally thought the two of you were in the bathtub filled with fries. <laughs> and I was like, I like the idea that you think one of us could fit in a bathtub, let alone the both of us. <laughs> like I tried to take a bath at my house like a year ago, and it was like, yo, I don't even fit in the fucking tub. Like... Yeah, I, I could see if they thought we were eating out of it like a trough, like a couple of hogs. Right. <laughs> we're just not actually over. fitting. Oh my god, I was in I was in Paris. The last time I tried to get into a bathtub, I was in Paris. I tried filled up the bathtub and I way over fucking filled it and forgot the laws of buoyancy and just I got in there and just <laughs> you ever, flooded. You forgot the whole about volume thing. and mass, all the things they taught us in school. Yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we did. And then uh, the next day, yeah, that's we, always, uh, that's always that thing. When you misjudge how fat you are, when you fill a tub or a pool and you get in and you just hear the <laughs> over the edge and you go, yeah, I'm fatter than I thought I was. <laughs> yep. Yep. And then and you finish the bath. If you got to finish it and then fucking clean up after yourself. Yeah. You're just like, I didn't realize that I was going to turn the entire bathroom into the tub. Then it's all, <laughs> I, I didn't even need to get in. I, I could have just fucking filled the whole bath, the bath with water. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we. Oh, and, man. <laughs> so that was it's, some night, and then the next day we went to uh, Anthony's coal fired pizza, and uh, no. <laughs> we were there for that? hours. We were there for hours, but let's like, let's be clear. We weren't there for hours because we kept ordering. We were there yep. for hours because I, I was like, let me, I got to pop on this podcast real quick. And I thought I was just popping in for like a short segment. And then mm -hmm. I found out that I was popping in for the entire podcast. And then, uh, so you're just sitting there like, well, I guess I'll, I guess I'll keep eating. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, there was maybe like a five minute period. I'm like, should I wait for them? Should I? And they, they keep bringing out Buffalo wings and mozzarella bread and, yeah. and pizza comes out. And, and then, plan. and then at one point you didn't give a shit and just started eating while you were podcasting. I know why well, was it? I did get to that point where I was just like, yo man, I'm like, this is running long now. And now I'm just going to start eating pizza on this podcast. <laughs> and I, I like how I was trying to do it discreetly in the beginning where I was just like, I would like lean off camera and take a bite. And then yeah. eventually that I think somebody on a podcast, like, what are you doing? And I was like, well, I am kind of having lunch right now. And they're like, oh, just, <laughs> just eat while we're talking. And then I was just, I basically checked out of the podcast for a minute, which yeah. is like, but anybody who hasn't been on the East coast and had Anthony's coal fired pizza, doesn't know what the fuck they're missing, dude. I, I swear. It's like the best chain pizza ever to exist. It really is. It, it's real. Like old school. Uh, the focaccia pizza and all the, the the, the fucking dough is ridiculous there. It's so good. It's like got that nice scorch, that nice black on the top of the dough. Yeah. Yeah. That, oh, then that, meat, that meatball one that they have is unbelievable. Dude, it's all so good. I mean, even their, their salads are good. Their wings are amazing. They do wings yeah. and they put these like little, little crystallized onions on them. Listen, I, I went to that place the first time many years ago. I went out to Jersey to do like corporate for my buddy's window company. And uh, it was like a holiday corporate, uh, you know, like party, like a Christmas party. And they hired me to be the entertainment. And it basically just turned into me like roasting everybody I had met throughout the day at the office. And, yeah. and then the funny thing is, is then like the, the owner of the company's son, who I guess is like the acting president, he, yeah. he somehow got, I guess, and I guess he's also like a rapper. He somehow <laughs> got inspired by me roasting people and decided he was going to go up and also roast everybody and freestyle um, rap roast everybody. Yeah. Like sort of like rap battle roast everybody. And then the problem, but the problem is like, I go, listen, man, uh, I can do this because I don't have to show up to work with these people on Monday. Like, sure. you, are, you are doing like what I'm doing is comedy. And what you are doing is creating a hostile work environment <laughs> for all of your fucking employees. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, this is not a good thing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, uh, it's funny. Like I talked to my buddy who booked me out there, Jason, after that, he goes, yeah, that was a whole, that was an ordeal. But anyway, we were leaving for the day after the party and I didn't, you know, I don't like to eat before I perform. 
um, like right before I perform. And they had like, they were like, just eat some of the holiday spread. And I was like, dude, I don't want to go up and, you know, Robert Goulet, this thing and just be like burping the entire time. Yeah. So I didn't eat. And then everything, you know, like banquet style, like everything was shut down and like packed up before I got done. Um, you know, yeah. at the end of the event. So I was like, dude, I'm starving. And it was a bl- like, it just started blizzarding. Um, and I live in California, so I didn't bring any blizzard attire whatsoever. <laughs> I think I had like a thin hoodie or something I was wearing. Yeah. So we're, we're in, and he drives like a convertible sports car. So we're like in his shitty convertible. Like it, I sound say shitty. It's nice. I think it was like a Mercedes or something or a Porsche, but, uh, but we're in this sports car. It's shitty in the snow. It's worth sliding everywhere. So like driving is a bitch. And I'm starving. And then we just see an Anthony's off to the side. And I was like, dude, let's go into this pizza place and get food. And like a mirage we were like, in the desert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> and dude, we were so, we were so hungry. I don't think he really ate at the work thing either, but we were yeah. so hungry and we were snowed in that we, I think we ordered like two pizzas and order of wings, a salad. Like it, <laughs> we just kept it coming, man. Isn't that the best though? When, when you're desperate for something and I'll take anything, I'll take an Arby's on the side of the road. But when you actually, you go in somewhere that's actually really fucking good when you're desperate and hungry like that. Yeah, and you exactly. Go crazy. It's yeah, it's you, you do, you go ham because you're just like, and the added element of like being stuck in a, in weather, you're just like, fuck it. We're in now. Like snow me in here. I'll live. I'll, I will live here. Yeah. Like let there be an apocalypse. I'll be the first guy who's like, who are we eating first? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's me. I'm like, listen, starve to death. You're out of your fucking mind. I'd rather eat every other person with me than starve to death. <laughs> 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 so we've been talking about this this weekend of gigs for 15 minutes and haven't even mentioned the show yet just the food around the yeah. show well the first night was you know i remember i remember when you came in the first night i was like dude we're doing a we're doing a show in wilmington delaware in a predominantly black comedy club <laughs> uh on the night of the nfl draft and it's a night that they normally don't have shows. I was like, I don't think anybody's showing up to this thing tonight. <laughs> yeah. But um, but we ended up doing a show. I was like, fuck it, we'll do a show for three people. And that Absolutely. was a blast. And we did a and great th- show for three people. Yeah, it was it was awesome. It was a ton yeah. of fun. And by the way, I don't remember, I don't think it was this way for you, but like I hadn't done an hour in a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah, that like, was probably the longest that I extended set that I had done in, in quite a while. So for me, I was like, yeah, I'll run this fucking hour in front of three people because it might suck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, uh, like- and I, w- I felt good. I felt like we got the kinks out then by the shows the next night. They were great. I think yeah. we ended up doing like, I think the first show we had like uh, 40-something. Second show we had like 30-something people. It was like a good, you know, and this is a they were, room. They were- the room only holds like 50 to 70 people with the yeah. distancing. Yeah, they were awesome. The staff there was a lot of fun. Oh, they were great. The food at the club was great. Uh, yeah, the wings. We ate wings yeah. at the club. That's that's how you know you're fat is when you're like, I'll have wings at the club, and uh, then I'll go back to the room and order a cheesesteak. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But it was it was a great place, man. And uh, you know, I would I would love to go back there and do that room again at some point. It's just, yeah. um, you know, I, I and I don't know what it's like for you guys there in New York. We'll talk about that, obviously. But I I pretty much have I think I've done like one or two shows since I got back from doing those with you because oh. everything now is vaccine mandates. Everything is mask mandates, and so I, I'm just like, yeah, man, I'm yeah. not gonna go get vaccinated just to do <laughs> spots around LA that don't pay shit. Exactly. Exactly. I'm I'm lucky because I'm on Long Island, and Long Island doesn't have the mandates. Manhattan. Oh, that's doesn't. good. New York City has the mandates, and I haven't. Honestly, though, I I, I did a show in uh, Queens the other day, which I guess is technically the city. I don't know if they have the mandates there, but they didn't ask me if it was. You know, it was just a restaurant, but they didn't ask me for for proof of vaccination. But on Long Island, all the restaurants, the comedy clubs, and the theaters here don't ask you to be mandated. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Is, and I almost wonder, like, is it because there's still like that Long Island remnants of the mob where like the government's like, listen, we kind of run things, but we don't all the way run things. It really is. You know, in, in New York, they, they, you know, New York's a, a blue state. But the, the reason it's a blue state is because Manhattan is so densely populated with Democrats. When you come yeah. to Long Island, New York, Long Island's red. And yeah. then, well, you know, and Jersey, then, too, for the most yeah. part. Exactly. And New York City has a piece of shit mayor, Bill de Blasio, 
that's a fucking jerk off. And he's the one that keeps that, that is, he's continuing the mandate. And now our new governor is, uh, is heavily invested in it because supposedly her daughter is, uh, on, uh, 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 one of the boards with big pharma and, uh, she's, uh, it's either her daughter or her daughter-in-law and she's pushing the, uh, the government officials here to really push the mandates. Yeah, it's wild. I just did. I just did Kumia's show right before this, and we were he, we were covering a segment where he was showing the NBA player who was speaking out against the vaccine. And I go, you know, it's funny as we sit here, we wonder like why these sports leagues are so obsessed with va- vaccination mandates. Because you would think yeah. like these are elite athletes. Like if any, yeah. if there's any section of society where we would defer to their better judgment uh, for their health, you would think it would be professional athletes. You would think people yeah. go, listen, these guys know more about their bodies than anybody else. We'll let them decide, but they're, they're almost being more strict with the mandates. And then you watch these press conferences and you look at the, the step and repeat behind them. And it's yeah. like right next to the logo of the team is advent health. Uh, yeah. you know, uh, uh, Widener Medical or what? They, they're all health yeah. sponsors. Everything is huge here is NYU Langone on all. You said all the step and repeats here. You see NYU Langone on the Knicks, the Nets. And there's a Ky- Kyrie Irving is the one that uh that didn't want to get. Me- uh, vaccinated, right? He's the one that's taking the stand, I believe. Well, there's a bunch. There's a bunch of players. Yeah. There was a, a young, really young guy. Uh, I don't remember who it was we were watching, but, you know, he said, listen, mm-hmm. I have, like, naturalized immunity. I had COVID, and, you know, he yeah. said uh, he listed out all the reasons why, you know, and, and then at the end, he was like, I just think it should be people's personal choice, and not only do I think they should be allowed to make whatever choice they want, but I, I don't think we should be asking people what their choice is and why. And you know, just an incredibly thoughtful response and really, you know, obviously the gentleman's well researched and knows his stuff. And, and I yeah. go, it's, you know, and then as like, you, you almost are just like waiting for them to give him the Nicki Minaj treatment where they're just like, who gave this one books and taught it to read? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you I know. know what I mean? Yep. I know. That's what it is. And you're allowed to be apprehensive about putting something in your body with no long term results. No yeah, long-term that's, test results. That, I mean, that's what I think is funny. I have a friend who who now I consider a former friend because you know she, she just like pushed this vaccine shit too hard with me, uh, mm-hmm. and it's like one of those. This is what I love about our so-called friends or acquaintances we haven't talked to in many years. But it's like they'll not talk to you for a decade, or yeah. they'll talk to you very sparsely for a decade, and then mm-hmm. the, something comes along, especially like if you're in the public eye in any way where like you strike a chord with them and then they decide to reinsert themselves into your life to try to influence <laughs> you in some way. Yeah. Yep. And so she just starts sending me articles via email about, and she works in genetics, yeah. send me an article and emails about the effects of COVID. And I go like, have you had it? And she's like, no. And I go, I've had it three times. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so I know what the fucking effects are. She's like, yeah, but the long-term effects, like, you know, we know those are bad. I go, the fucking virus has been around <laughs> as long as the vaccine has been around with the exception of a few months. Exactly. How you do know you what I mean? Know, so it's like, you don't know the long-term effects of either of these fucking yeah. things. What are you talking about? Did you just say, you know, the long-term effects of something that's been around for two years? Right. Right. She's like, well, we already know. And I was like, why are you sending me all this fucking shit? And she's like, because yeah. I really want you to get vaccinated. I go, you know, you don't give a fuck what I've been doing for the last 20 years. You now you want me to be vaccinated? Exactly. Exactly. It's just insane, man. And it's just like it's it, what it is. And I've said this so much is like, listen, I don't have a problem with what choice people make for their personal health. But the cult of this is basically because. So many people just jumped in with both feet without doing any research. And now they feel fucking stupid that all of these reports are coming out saying, like, actually, there's some really bad side effects to the vaccine. Actually, the yeah. vaccine's not that effective. Actually, you can really still get COVID in any case. And so now they feel fucking dumb and they want you to have to do it so they don't feel stupid. Yeah. But, and, and actually, your natural immunity is what's really going to fight this virus. And- you know, it's, it's it, that's how uh, that's what's going to spread to fight the virus is your natural. And I'm, sure, and I'm sure people are watching this and they're like, are these two fat fucks talking about health? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah. yeah. We both had COVID and uh, we both are intelligent people to do research. Well, it's also like if the, if two fatties <laughs> like us can fucking survive it, maybe what yeah. they're telling you isn't real. Did exactly. you ever think about that? 
I'm, I'm a walking, like, co- I'm a walking comorbidity. Right? <laughs> yeah. You're like, you're literally like if at the end of Ghostbusters, instead of thinking about something that warmed his childhood, he thought about what, are, what is all of the comorbidities of COVID? You would have appeared in place of the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. <laughs> And and people are literally like, you know what I mean? Like, oh God, I just I tried not to think about it, but there he is, you know? Yeah. And you're fine. We're both fine. We both yeah. had, had it. I think we both had had it like a year before we got together. And then I'm pretty sure I probably caught it traveling. Um, you know, because I stayed in on the East Coast for a few weeks after we did those shows and then mm-hmm. came back and was running around like a madman for a couple weeks in LA. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, I'm sure I got it somewhere yeah. in that early yeah. stage. Yeah, exactly. like end of May, beginning of June, but it's like, you know, and, and the only long-term effect I have that some people know about this is now I have celiacs and, and I think I've been gluten intolerant my whole life to some degree, like looking yeah. back. And I, I think I shared this with you. Like I don't drink because of what it always did to my stomach. Like I would, if I drank yeah. beer, or I drank whiskey and my stomach would be all kinds of fucked up. And, yeah. um, I I basically, so I just stayed away from alcohol because of that at a young age, but I always thought it was the alcohol that was making me sick. I never thought it was maybe the wheat or the barley or any of that. And, and then, um, you know, after this last bout with COVID, I kept finding myself itchy all the time. And then I was like, what uh, I was trying to figure it out. I was changing soaps. I was changing, like I was looking at the fabric of my clothing. And then one night I ordered pizza and I ordered like good, you know, double O flour pizza. And yeah. immediately my fucking body was like broke out in hives everywhere. And I was like, oh my God, I think it's it's either the dairy or the wheat. Yeah. And absolutely. I just kept testing it through the weekend and found out it was the wheat. The COVID could have enhanced it, but I'm sure you've always been intolerant of it. I yeah. I've had an intolerance. I I had the same effect though, where I I broke out in hives from head to toe. I went into anaphylactic shock one time and got tested for allergies. Only thing that came up was wheat. And wow. um, I, I I'll still get a little bit itchy if I eat if I notice that I eat a lot of wheat, but I but I still do. And I'm not. You know. I know. I was joking with you before we went live. I was like, well, we just find out we're not even fat. We're just inflamed <laughs> from exposing ourselves to allergies for the last thirty years. Just like, yeah, man, this is what you look like if you just <laughs> fucking eat your way through an allergy. <laughs> It's weird Mike, though because we're both gluten, Mike went gluten free and lost three hundred pounds of air. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's, it's weird too. Do you wonder if that intolerance is developed because we're both Irish, right? I yeah. wonder. Do you think that intolerance is developed genetically because of just fucking centuries of drinking ourselves <laughs> retarded? Exactly right. <laughs> I mean, I wonder if that's where it comes from because I, it I was could I very was, well be. I was telling Anthony, I was like, I know three other people that now I believe have celiacs, and um, they're all redheads, and they all had COVID. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, man, we might have stumbled onto something like where <laughs> they're trying to kill off the Irish. You know? <laughs> it's just a super long term uh, fucking genocide. Yeah, they're just like, good, good luck not drinking, you mick motherfuckers. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, if you put it in wheat, you can kill all the Irish. If you want to kill all the black people, you just put it in white pussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I, I watched this movie uh, the other night called Chaos Walking. Have you seen it with uh, Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley? No, I haven't. It's a total piece of shit. It might be the worst sort of big budget movie I've ever seen. It's this mm-hmm. idea that, uh, like, I guess we fuck up Earth. We go to this other planet, and when the when they land on the other planet, all of the men's thoughts now project outwards. So, like, you can literally they call it the noise, and you can just hear what men are thinking all the time out loud. <laughs> Oh, and, and it's uh, there's only one black guy in the whole movie and i was like yeah it's probably because when that happened all the black guys noise was just like pussy 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 pussy, pussy. Ch- chubby white pussy chubby white pussy yeah exactly pussy but they're just like listen we gotta we gotta put these guys down man i can't hear that word a thousand times every second uh but but spoiler alert in the movie they kill all the women uh because the women the women uh, don't have a noise. And so uh, supposedly in the film, the men, uh, they don't like that they can't hear what women are thinking. 
And then they just murder them all because they're bothered by the fact that they don't have a noise. And I was like, is it possible that women just don't think? They don't think. They just say. That's what yes. it is. I, they don't have thoughts. They just there say is no, bullshit all the there time. There is no inner monologue. It goes from here to here. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I was I, I, so naturally. I, I'm just sitting watching this movie as sometimes we do as comedians, where I'm just shitting on the plot, and you know, it's like, yeah, of course they don't have thought bubbles that you can hear. They don't have thoughts. They just go, just, well, you know what? Uh, <laughs> the inability to think to themselves at all, like, or or the god of that planet was just like, I don't need them. I don't need you to know what they're thinking. They'll tell you. Yeah, They'll exactly. tell you even when you absolutely don't want to fucking know. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, it's so yeah, it was it was it. It was so and I really I like Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley, but it was such a bad movie. Yeah. Like Daisy Ridley, I gotta be honest, she's a, she was tremendous in Star Wars, especially in that first one, like episode seven. Her yeah, acting was yeah. great. She was great. She's made some some really bad choices outside of Star Wars in terms of yeah. movie. <laughs> just you know, it, this one was not good. It, it's it's yeah. just like you look at these things and you go like, how did this one go so wrong? You know, they obviously <laughs> had money, they had actors. It's just, and then they still just like they fucked it up. Exactly. <laughs> That's wild, man. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, you're on Long Island. Uh, you know, you're going through the all this New York stuff, these vaccine mandates, and all that type of thing. I mean, how is how is life out there? Even though you're not directly in the in the thick of shit, how is it out there? Uh, not just like living on Long Island, but in the comedy world. I mean, what what's the what's the pulse like? You know, you, you fe we feel that it's it's on its way here to Long Island. Because all, all the theaters and nightclubs here, they're starting to say, you know, you, you have to have not you don't have to have the vaccine, but you have to show a negative test. And those those rules are changing every week. I, you know, I had uh, even just in regular life, I had uh, bought my girlfriend tickets to go see a show on Broadway and I bought them like three months ago. And like two weeks ago, they said now anything after October 13th, I think, on Broadway you have to be vaccinated in order to go see the show. I had to fucking sell the tickets. Oh man. Cause my, my That's girlfriend rough. is not vaccinated and I love that she's not vaccinated. Cause we spend a lot of time in the city. I can't take her out to dinner. I can't go to nightclubs. I've saved like <laughs> 30,000 fucking dollars. <laughs> yeah that's the that's the unintended uh, that's the <laughs> people don't realize that'd be a great way to start saving yourself money you got a new girlfriend like listen honey i don't want you to take in this thing it's experimental it's bad for your health and you know one of the byproducts is is we really won't be able to go anywhere for the next six months to a year but it's a sacrifice i'm willing to make for the betterment of your life yeah, but we could buy a house in the Hamptons in a year now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know, it takes to go I, out. I, I, hate, night. I hate the fascism of it, but I like the the bank account. So yeah, you like the, the savings, such <laughs> tremendous <laughs> savings. Yeah, yeah. I think you might have tapped into why the Jews are so quiet because everybody's going. <laughs> is it is it this like World War Two and they're just like calm down? We saving money. <laughs> exactly. Diamonds have never been uh, on the rise like they are. So. Uh, uh, you know, and the real estate is not looking too bad, and uh, I just have the I just have the most like racist Jewish voice ever. <laughs> it was just straight out of uh, Morton Family Guy. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm just doing Saul Rosenberg from the, jo the Jerky Boys, which people, if you if you're old enough to remember, that's who Mort Goldman that, is basically based on. Yeah, and that's that's the same voice Johnny Brennan that does the voice. The yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah, Saul Rosenberg. I love. Yeah. Do, you, do you remember the old Jerky Boys? I oh love yeah, them. I, I still listen to them all the time. Me too. Like I when I'm on them. the road, I'll pop them in. Yeah, me and my friends still quote them all the time. All the time, man. It's yeah. it's some it's some of the best shit ever. It's just uh, yeah. I have lawn chairs. <laughs> That's it. No, I have other lawn chairs. <laughs> like, uh, I just loved it so much. Oh, and my God, his uh, the gay hairstylist Jack Tours. That's oh, like that, yeah. Dude, That's I, the best. I, and when it's they the call Frank Notch's friend, when they, it's, it's Frank Rizzo calls him up and yeah, <laughs> there's so many good ones, man. I mean, those were like, 
you know, when I did a bunch of podcasts in the last couple of weeks, because obviously I was doing a lot of press after, you know, calling women whores on the Internet uh, that, that got a, that went a little viral. <laughs> Uh, yeah, which little, actually uh, it, it caught a little traction, huh? Yeah, that one guy, that one snagged a couple of sweaters. <laughs> well, that's so, another thing that we had in common with that we found. We were there's the, every, we were both everyone's trying to cancel us both all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. For being concerned. Well, and it's it's weird too because it's like uh, you know I, I I hate when when uh, people talk about being like classically liberal because uh, you know it sounds like such a pussy footed way to sort of avoid the label of being conservative, but it's like, you know, I, my views were never really considered conservative in the past. I just thought they were sort of like centrist and rational, but now mm-hmm. everything has shifted so far the other way where it's like, nah, man, we're as fucking conservative as it gets now. Exactly. Yep. I, so I think, uh, you know, I had, I even, even recently, I, I got fi- fired from my day job not too long ago because of something that I tweeted. Was this the, uh, this was pre real estate or post real estate? Pre, pre real estate. Okay. I was working in a uh, school district in a predominantly black neighborhood. And something that I tweeted about, uh, it was when that, um, that, that cop shot that black girl that was trying to stab the other black girl. Oh yeah. Yeah. You mean when the cop did his job? <laughs> when that, yeah, that time that cop did what they, what he was Remember hired that time to do? that cop saved that woman's life. Oh yeah. yeah that controversy. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I lose my job because that cop did his job. Jeez. And, uh, I mean, it's getting insane, man. It's getting it's like that kind of shit is getting insane where we're going so far the other way. And listen, I got crucified three years ago when I was I basically highlighted uh, how openly accepted it is to be racist towards white people now. And yeah. then like that ASU video comes out last week where the yeah. women are screaming, like, get your fucking white ass out of our space. <laughs> And I was just like, yo, uh, if only a comedian or somebody had like predicted this was coming three years ago, we would have been able to do something about it. Right. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And And not been fucking crucified for it and having everything try to be taken away from them. Yeah, 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 it's it's just like you know, and and that, but that's what I was saying, and like more the bigger ripple effect of that was a year later when I tried to go back to corporate America and have like a regular corporate job. Uh, I was there for two days before some woman didn't even work in my department was like, I saw what he said on Twitter a year ago when there was all this controversy. And I think you, I don't want to work here because of him. Yeah. And uh, yeah. of course she didn't quit. She just went to HR and they decided to fire me. Um, and it's like, even what I said at the time that was controversial wasn't necessarily offensive. It was just controversial to people. Yeah. But then they went back and found all the jokes I've done as a comedian on Twitter for a decade And then they were like, this is proof that he's actually racist. So this girl is like offended at comedy material based on an opinion I had that was unpopular. (laughs) And that is the real life ramification of getting you fired from a job. Unbelievable. And that's and So, and it sounds like that's kind of what happened to you. That's what happened to me there. And then the same time that was happening to you is when I got banned from that theater on long Island. Yeah. because I, I, I tweeted about Greta Thunberg. And it was a theater that I had have not. I was I hadn't done a show there in six months. I wasn't on the schedule to do a show there. And they wrote on their Facebook page that uh, because of whatever I tweeted, I will never. Michael Keegan will never be allowed on our stage again. And blah blah blah. The news they picked it up and all the, uh, the r- news stations over here. And uh, that was fucking bullshit enough. And I'm like, you know what? If you don't want me at your theater, I won't come to your theater. I don't need that. I don't need that fucking hundred dollars a year that you give me. But about three months ago. And this is three years later, I got booked at another theater on long Island and the producer of the show came up to me and said, the director at this theater asked me what your deal was because the director from that theater that banned me called him to tell me not tell him not to use me fucking three years later. They're still trying to take work away from me. Yeah. It's wild that way that works. And like the, the thing that bothers me about it too, is like, you know, I'll use this example. I did a Rick Bronson's house of comedy in Minneapolis and I did it Mm -hmm. as a fill in, Uh, a a buddy of mine made the recommendation, got me in there with them and had a great week. Like the staff love me. So so many people love me, but I remember like a day in uh, I got a call from Rick and he was like, yeah, man, like local press doesn't want to have you on uh, because of the thing from a year ago. And, um, and uh, we're getting like all these fucking complaint calls to the venue of people saying like, you're racist and you're misogynist and homophobic and we don't want to deal with it. And it's like, he, you know, Rick was like, dude, I, I get it. You're a fucking comedian. I get it. You know, but it's like, 
But these people still just don't want to deal with that. Like, yeah. even if they agree with you in principle, like, it's like they, they, yeah, they could stand behind you publicly and say, we agree with this guy. And like, he should have a right to, or even if they don't agree, they go, he should have a right to do what he wants. He should have his free speech to do this. Yeah. But they don't want to have to deal with like, he just doesn't want to get the text messages from the club manager going, what do we do about this? They don't even mm -hmm. want to deal with it. Exactly. So, it's gonna be it's like, stigma. yeah. So it's like, you, you know, it's like you carry this fucking, you know, and and you guys like you and I are in this weird place of like we're not like Tim Dillon seat fillers by any stretch of the yeah, imagination, yeah. Um, to where you can do whatever the fuck you want, and they're gonna they're gonna deal with you no matter what because you're making them too much money. Um, yeah, they, they say so like, Mike Keegan's gonna come here and do a great job, but there's also another Mike Keegan who could do a great job. There's a hundred of them, and, and there's a hundred of them that'll do it for less than Mike Keegan. Exactly, that's what it is. You know, so it's like so then it just kind of puts us into a space of like, all right, well, now and this is kind of what I'm looking at going into the new year. It's like, well, now the way I tour is going to have to be completely different. Like the way I tour is going to have to be me reaching out to a venue and either paying up front to rent it and making the money on the back end with my tickets or sponsorships or doing a collaboration with that venue and partnering and saying we can split profits or whatever. But in most cases, they're going to have to be non-traditional comedy venues. Yeah, exa exactly. You know, so whether it's like a speakeasy or a bar or a restaurant, like, you know, obviously I have a lot of connections in the restaurant world mm -hmm. and a lot of um, equity there from doing the food network thing. So, yeah. um, you know, there, that's sort of like the obvious one for me in a lot of states. But on the flip side, it's like you still got to deal with like when you call those. Like I know for a fact there are like clubs I reach out to and go, listen, I got a lot of fans in your city. I'm looking for a place to do a show in your city. Uh, and I know they just Google and go, ah, we don't want to get the calls. <laughs> Exactly. You know we don't I mean? get like, the calls. We get another Josh Denny, and yeah, like you know. Uh, so it, you kind of like one of the real tricks to this going forward is going to be finding places that need that competitive advantage of doing live entertainment because no, none of their competitors are doing it. So yeah. like doing it in a restaurant space, doing it in like a speakeasy. I mean, doing it in some of these off the wall yeah. venues is going to yeah. be you're going to, they're going to, they're going to have to do it. Cause they're going to go fuck like my restaurant's not doing well enough by itself. So mm -hmm, I yeah. gotta, I, maybe having this thing will bring me in a whole new customer base that yeah. will help my business even after this dude leaves. And that's yeah. really how you kind of have to pitch these things and sell it of like, you know, yeah. the people that'll come to see me might not already be your customers. This could be a great business move for you. Yeah. And there's no risk because I'll assume all the risk of the cost and then I'll make the money on whether or not the show makes money or not. Yeah, and whether or not you you weren't going to have a busy night anyway, you're selling more food and drinks than you were going to sell. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's the thing. I'm always interested. Like, okay, what do you normally make on this night? And what do you know? So how do I? How do in, in terms of like, is this worthwhile for you to host this kind of event? You know, is are you yeah. going to see an uptick? And it usually doesn't take much, you know, to give them an increase over their business by doing a show. I mean, you could do a show for twenty fucking people. Twenty yeah. extra heads in a restaurant is like, you know, yeah. depending on the size of the restaurant, could be a game changing night of the. Week. On an off night, that's the it's an easy sell usually. Yeah, so you know it it, it is going to change the whole way we kind of do comedy going forward. But I'm I'm okay with that, and at least we have technology on our side where it's like I I can go on a website, design my own event, sell my own tickets create yeah. my own marketing. I can buy advertising online, you know, mm -hmm. place it in the places around that community, sell the tickets. I mean, you know, it's, and this is, this is what a lot of people don't understand guys like mm -hmm. Tim and Schultz and Rogan, they put their name mm -hmm. on a marquee. It goes up on the club website. They announce it on their social media and they sell out. But yeah. even people as big as like Schumer and Whitney and some of these other big names who don't necessarily have a day to day interaction with their fan base. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Amy doesn't do a podcast or anything to my knowledge where yeah. she's like talking to her fans all the time. So yeah. those people work with companies like Live Nation. And part mm -hmm. of the deal is like Live Nation spends tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands placing ads to sell tickets on, to these on shows. Promotion. Yeah. Yeah. And so even it's like, like uh, like guys like Kevin Hart, I know that they have a contract with a club and the club can promote the show and they'll even have a second contract to say, if you want me, Kevin Hart, to promote the show on my social media, that's another contract that you're going to have to sign with me and another and it's more money. And another stream of payment. Yeah. Yeah. Because these people are not just entertainers. They're also social media influencers. So it's like exactly. I'm, I'm advertising your fucking your business as well. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's there. It's a very the you know the the big machine comedy is there's a lot of moving parts to it that I think the public doesn't understand, and it's like you know there's a lot that goes into some of those people that are like system entertainers selling out arenas. Um, yeah. Even like the Gaffigans, Gaffigan and Sebastian are great examples. Like those guys sell out big arenas, but yeah. I would be interested to see like how much money are they spending on marketing to do that? Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. There's definitely whereas a, a guy like, whereas a guy like Tim is like, okay, I have, you know, Tim probably has 60 to a hundred thousand fans in every state. And then he goes, all right, give me a venue that's 2,500 or 3000 and yeah. I'll do f- two to four shows. And so you're already looking at the the law of sort of a 1% conversion and you yeah. I could sell those with just what I'll convert of my, my actual fans. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, so it's not, there's not hard and I'd be willing to bet Tim doesn't have to spend any money on advertising to sell out those venues. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But <laughs> so, you know, it's like, it's, it's, um, it, it's, it's a fun time I think to be a comic because you know, we're, we're having to sort of like almost like reinvent the wheel on the fly in some regards. Yeah. And when you discover that new way to get a stream of income, it's, it's a lot of fun and yeah. it, it, it's a whole new part of the, the work, but uh, we weren't going to, I wasn't going to plug your only fans so quick, Mike, but let's get into it. <laughs> Have you made the switch yet? Are you, are you making only fans content? It's, uh, it's, it's my feet. I step on chocolate cake. And, uh, <laughs> in a baby pool full of chocolate cake and it's, Not, uh, yeah i was gonna say how much chocolate cake does it take for you to make it look sexy and dainty? <laughs> so much chocolate cake how many did you eat before you got the shop you fat fuck <laughs> how many did i eat after yeah you know. <laughs> yeah i'm sure you're like that's the pre. it's the 25 dollar yeah. tier is watching yeah, me right. eat it after i <laughs> foot fuck it <laughs> You laugh, man. I had a, uh, I had Candace Horback. Uh, she goes by the, the, her porn name was Ava Lovia and, mm. um, or Lovia, I guess. I don't know. But, um, she, she was on my podcast a, a few episodes back and then she was like, I don't know if it was on the pod or in the bonus show or whatever. I was asking her, it's like, you know, what's the weirdest thing you'll, you've done on OnlyFans? And she's like, I actually just shot some content today that was, uh, uh, was a was me putting my feet in a pie, and I was just like, I wonder what that fucking pays, dude. Yeah, I know. I know right? I'm like, I wonder how much a hot woman gets just to put her feet in a pie. Yeah, because like, exactly. let's say, let's say that Candace gets, I don't know, ten G's worth of mm-hmm. of paid vid- like paid video purchases. Um, yeah. and, and you know, like, say that's ten thousand a ten dollar video, and a thousand people buy it because they're into yeah. that. Could I, could I make a thousand if I did it? <laughs> like that's the shit that starts to go through your head of like, you know, yeah. are there yeah. enough, are there enough like weird gays out there? <laughs> and the answer is yes. The, the answer is absolutely yes. But you know what? It's supply and demand. Yeah. There's not, there's not a whole lot of fat guy foot fucking pies video out there. I know. I but there is the an audience and they're dying for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, you and I should just start a, a channel on OnlyFans called Bears on Parade, <laughs> and it's literally just, or actually, or we could do all you can bear, and Ooh. it's just oversized fat men <laughs> just bathing themselves in food, and Honestly, and let's just there's, see what we make. There's a fucking market for it, I guarantee you. <laughs> well, every gay, every time I bring something like this up on a show or in tw- on Twitter or on Instagram, I get like a flood of five to ten messages of gay fans going like, "I'd fucking pay to see that." All right. Well, if you would, <laughs> I I I put your money where your gay mouth is. All you. <laughs> <laughs> all you can bear that i see i just like the branding of that yeah exactly uh, you know and then but we would spell it bear b-e-a-r, B-E-A-R. Obviously. Yeah. yeah and then we would be homosexual obese yeah absolutely. Uh, <laughs> i was I, beasts <laughs> and where to feed them during during quarantine i i I was like fucking around on like dating sites, even though, you know, I'm, I'm in a relationship just, just cause I was bored and I was going like gay dating sites. And, um, there was one, uh, one site, hey man, and- you know, you could get an Xbox, right? Mike? <laughs> 
you, have you ever tried Grand Theft Auto, you fucking Fruit Loop? Yeah, I, I get bored sometimes, too. I play MLB The Show. I don't pretend to want to fuck a guy. <laughs> I just wanted to see like what I could get. Like I just wanted to throw Okay, the, I get it. Yeah. Throw, throw, throw the bait out there. And one it's guy like when, it's and, like when you find like old memorabilia and you're like, what's what's this worth on eBay? <laughs> you're like these action figures I used to play with as a kid. I wonder what they gotta be worth something. You're just like, I wonder what I could get for the old man pussy. <laughs> I threw her out on the market. And I will tell you there was a category called Super Chub. Ooh. And I put myself in that category. Can I tell you how many angry messages I got from men saying you are not a super chub? You what? are nowhere near a super chub. You're a regular chub. Yeah. Wow. That had to be the biggest self-esteem boost of your life. <laughs> I felt so good. And then I was also like. <laughs> you were like, it, it motivated me to go back to women. I was so <laughs> enthused. <laughs> Sent me raw. I was like, I might actually be able to go get some pussy. <laughs> I got a half a dozen angry messages calling me out and not being chubby enough to be. By the way, chub. so what's a super chub? Like you can't, you can barely see your irises in your fucking eyeballs. <laughs> exactly. It must be. They're like, like if, if your you're eyes in- aren't like this. <laughs> Once you're in scooter territory, I think. Oh, is. okay. You got to be not able to move fat. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be small crane forklift fat. Exactly. Super job. That's amazing super. that you you got complaints for not being fat enough. <laughs> not being fat enough. Exactly. You, you like, probably I want like, to bring, bring this to my primary care physician. Yeah. <laughs> listen, these, these homosexuals known for their <laughs> medical understanding. <laughs> Did I tell you, did I tell you that story about uh, going to the uh, the op- the optometrist to get new glasses? And no, he I might, he, it was a gay doctor, and he told me I might have a brain tumor. No, really? Yeah, yeah, because I have papilledema behind my eyes, or did. And and uh, number one, the first thing I asked him was like, "Well, can't that be like a byproduct of traumatic brain injury or concussions, which I've had a lot of?" And he's mm. like, "Absolutely not." And I was like, <laughs> "All right, well." I'm going to just go on a limb here and say, you really don't know what the fuck you're talking about because I was like, I'm sure when I look this up, I'm going to find out that it's definitely a side effect of (laughs) concussions and traumatic brain injury. And I was right. Um, I also found out that it's like they did a study in England and found out that it's like one in 27 people who have had COVID have post COVID papilledema of swelling of the optic nerve tissue behind the eyes. Really? So it's like a pretty fucking common side effect of having COVID, which I had just had when I went to get my eyes checked. But I do remember walking out of the office and going like, well, you fuck men where they shit. And so <laughs> I don't know where you got your medical degree, but I'm pretty sure we can agree that it can be thrown away. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you, you are when, a, sh- you're a strip mall eye doctor that fucks other men in their poop hole. <laughs> when you take rectal trauma and throw it out the window. Yeah. You're just like, listen, uh, so, so let me get this right. So you went to a, a, an accredited university and mm-hmm. you wanted to be a doctor and they're walking you through the body and they go like, these are the reproductive organs. And this is where the shit comes out. And this is where your penis goes. And then you thought, <laughs> And then you said, you raised your hand and you said, excuse me, uh, because I'm sure that's you were talking like this back then, too. (laughs) Excuse me, but um, I don't think the penis has to go there. I think we can pretty much put it wherever we want. And I kind of want to put it where the shit comes out. (laughs) Now, that's your freedom as an American to do that. But Mm. it does make you a little divergent in the world of medicine. (laughs) It makes you, know you I mean? you're free as an American, but you're irresponsible as a doctor. Yes, yes. It's yeah. very it's a very medically uh risky position to hold, right? Yeah. Yeah. Y- you know, and, and listen, it's your right and your freedom to have that belief. I just don't think as a medical professional, it jives yeah. with the science. <laughs> I'm just asking you to follow the science. <laughs> Because it seems all like about on that one, science till it affects see, them. Yeah, it seems like on that one you strayed from the science just a bit, just yep. a little bit. 
Yep. Uh, talk about not, not following the science. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be how I refer to gay people from now on. Look at these motherfuckers <laughs> ignoring the science entirely. Yeah. <laughs> you're ignoring the bible and science you're, yeah you, yeah you just said fuck religion and this and the science yeah. this guy just doesn't like books <laughs> <laughs> this guy rejects anything that's ever been recorded yeah. on paper yep when it's oh convenient for them it's it's my body my choice with killing babies but not for putting unknown substances in my in my body it's why i mean that's so crazy and and going back to that it's like you know yeah i love when people try to throw in my face like didn't you go on podcasts and talk about girls who had your abortions yeah i did um mm-hmm. that was also over a decade ago my mm-hmm. my beliefs have changed and part of the reason my beliefs have changed is because the world has changed I and mean, we live in a world now where women are like i just got my fucking 10th abortion and you're like ew dude like <laughs> shut it the fuck okay. down gross yeah, exactly. yeah and, and we also live in a society now where we're like we're 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 so quick to like dehumanize each other in every way possible that i just don't think that that's i don't think it's good for us and i don't yeah. think we you know, I remember when we grew up because we're about the same age when we grew up, uh, you know, you were told, like, oh, this will be the worst decision a woman ever has to make in her entire life. And it's like, yeah, and it probably was back then. But now it's like going to the fucking dentist. Yeah. And now and now Susan next door made that decision eight times in the past four years. Yeah. So it's like, you know, just because freedom of choice doesn't mean absolved of all responsibility, which is, yeah. I think, the the in uh, the. Uh, inappropriate conflation that has been made is that for choice to prevail uh you can't apply any sense of ethics or responsibility to the individual um Mm -hmm. and then yet to your point we have a completely opposite perspective when it comes to vaccination yeah putting an experimental drug inside your body that has no long-term result no no long time You know, that's that's where half of the population is saying your choice has to be removed because you're too fucking stupid to make the right one. And it's like, well, I kind of feel that way about women who are just killing babies. Yeah. 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 That's the hill they want to die on is baby murder. Okay. Yeah. And did you see like Congress pushed a thing like it almost in retaliation where the House, it was like two hundred and eighteen to one. They voted uh, to allow abortion up to birth. Up yeah. to birth. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, that's what I think is so funny is when people go like six weeks at the overwhelmingly, the pushback I got when I said what I said was a uh, six weeks is not enough time. And then I was like, I, I'm not going to get into this with any of you women, because the reality is, is if I come back to you and I say, all right, well, how much is the right amount of time? You're all unequivocally going to get backed into the corner where you say that it's as much as I say it is which yeah. is not something we can build laws <laughs> in a society around. It can't just be whenever you say it is. And yeah. we found out that because of the, there are plenty of you that think when you say it is means all the way up to and including birth. Yeah. I'm so I'm fucking unreal. You know, if women applied an ounce of the fucking humanity that they show for their dogs and their pets to their unborn children, we wouldn't even be having this discussion. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's so it's so insane to me that we can value the lives of other things like pets and plants uh, more than we value the lives of human beings. And and I think the way we've talked about abortion for the last 40 years is part of that. Yeah. Yep. Dehumanizing. But, you know, they'll tell you that guys like you and I just don't like it because we can't fuck. And if you listen to the segment earlier where we talked about our 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 chub status. (laughs) <laughs> you find out that that's very much not the case yeah it's not like i'm walking around some kind of super chub <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> oh my god and then you know and then you even have like people like Nicki minaj coming out going like hey man uh can i just like can i ask a couple questions and people are like get out of here with that yeah. you can't have questions you can't have an opinion we can't have opinions because we can't have babies that's disgusting to tell somebody you are not allowed to have an opinion yeah i mean it's so wild and you know it's like um you know to me you do you you, it does like it's it's kind of changed the way like i look at the world i was talking with this about this with lauren uh chen on a podcast that came out yesterday but um i was like you know the the fucking thing is i remember when we grew up 
uh, I graduated in 2001. And I remember in a weird way, like your guidance counselors and television and everything was like, uh, oh, the worst thing you could be is like a young parent. You know, you don't want to be one of these losers who gets like married out of high school and settles down and has kids and like fucking works at the family business or whatever else. Right. And I bought that. I bought that like so many people. I was like, yeah, I don't want to do that. And I, I also knew I didn't want to go to college and work in a fucking cubicle. Yeah. Um, so I, I figured out my own way. But it's amazing because now I go back and I look at the kids I went to school with and the ones who got married in their 20s and had kids in their 20s. And a lot of them did go to college, but then they, they immediately went back home and worked at the family business and got married and had kids and settled down yeah. unequivocally, unequivocally happier than all of the millionaires Absolutely. in our business. I know. Absolutely. They, they were they were forced to, to settle down quickly and build a life. And then they look around and like, you know what? I built a life and I enjoy it. And now I'm in my mid 20s and I enjoy what I have rather than going out and, and trying this and that. And it's, uh, I, I completely agree with you. Yeah. I mean, I, and Ch- I mean, listen, Chelsea Handler has millions of dollars and I'll show you. Uh, five girls that I met when I lived in Minnesota who have three or more kids and they are undoubtedly all happier than Chelsea Handler. There you go. Absolutely. You, you know what I mean? Like, are their lives perfect? No. Do they probably have nights where they fucking cry themselves to sleep because their kids run them to death? Sure. You know, yeah. but I'll tell you what, I've seen them smile a lot more than I've ever seen fucking Chelsea Handler smile. That's right. Um, you know, and they're, you know, they're, they have their own, they have great senses of humor and they're smart. They're not, they don't are like stupid fuck dolls who just pump out babies. Like these are smart <laughs> women who, who had other options in life, who had other choices. This is what they yeah. chose. Yeah. And so in a weird way, it's like the vaccination shit shouldn't be surprising to us because we've been shaming people for their choices for fucking 60 years now. Yeah. And you know, so you look at a society that, like we shame those girls for not going and being career women for settling down and having families. And they are unequivocally healthier, happier, more financially stable than the rest of us. Exactly. Yeah. So. To, to shame people that aren't vaccinated. And then even <clears throat> now they're, they're, they're lowering the age of vaccination where you could vaccinate a fucking five year old with this bullshit. You should be thrown in jail if you let a fu- we're going to have another uh, uh, fucking society of thalidomide fucking babies. Oh, I know. I mean, you know, uh, I, one of my, but I got to have him on the show, man, because he, he would, he, he's a very liberal Democrat, but he would mm-hmm. probably have an interesting perspective on the idea of forced vaccination or forced medical procedures because he's what's called a, a, a DES child. And so like mm-hmm. DES was something it was a drug that was administered to women in on military bases who were pregnant thinking like the 60s and 70s to prevent them from getting toxemia and then we found out that this drug created so many fucking autoimmune disorders and so this dude is a comic out of minneapolis a buddy of mine named daryl horner he's got lupus he's got all these other autoimmune conditions related to Mm -hmm. des Um, And so I would be very curious to know, even though he skews very liberal, what his thoughts are on the vaccination and and furthermore, forced vaccination, because I I could be wrong here. I don't remember. But I do believe that they were they required pregnant women to take this drug when they were on military bases. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And so I don't know if it was administered to her against her will or what, but I do. I do recall that um you know it was basically like an experimental drug that women took and it and it created all these fucking autoimmune problems for people hey and and overall i really don't see it as a political thing my my girlfriend's a very liberal democrat she will not get vaccinated i know a lot of staunch republicans that don't want that 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 won't get vaccinated that want to get vaccinated and i or i, I don't really or think have. It's born party line. they're yeah. trying to project they're trying to project it in the media that it's a party thing whether you want to get the vaccination or not but a lot well, of people I, they know fall on the other side that, that that they would want you to fall well and i think that's really what's at the core of the mandates is this belief that non-vaccination is a is a conservative thing um and I think that's why they want to do these mandates and they want to create two, a two tiered society where, uh, you know, basically Republicans don't have the same rights and freedoms as the rest of America. And, but yeah. the reality is they're starting to find out, particularly like in the black community, that they're not necessarily conservatives. They're just people mm-hmm. who are being rational about the process. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, a deal. 
you know, yep, a lot of minorities. Exactly. You see a lot of minorities that don't want the vaccine. Yeah. Man, Latinos, uh, you know, and people for religious reasons as well, who don't, you know, don't want to get it. And, yeah. you know, it's just, it, we're, we're starting to, you know, cancel culture was like the tip of the iceberg. Now we we've gone from like being a little too involved in people's personal lives to like full blown overreach yeah. where like, we're starting to tell people how they have to live and how they have to fucking, check in and go to work and and you know go out to eat and you know this mm-hmm. is like this is not the america any of us were promised or any of us want yeah absolutely it's crazy um yeah. and all that's going to happen is like you know if if the political if it continues to be politicized then the other team is going to get in in the next election and then it's going to be four years of retribution going the mm-hmm. other way Yep. Of, yep. Like, do you not understand that there's just going to the, the pendulum is always going to swing. You're never mm-hmm. going to stop the pendulum. So yeah. this idea that like we're in control now, we'll do whatever the fuck we want. Well, that's going to change. And then you're going to be on the receiving end of that. And it's just that vicious cycle. That's always going to happen. Yeah. it's just like, is that, that's why the government has to be, that's why we said there has to be a separation of church and state. Yeah. But now the, the, what side of the state you fall on is the new church. <laughs> Yeah, so exactly. it's right. like we've got to find a way to rip that shit out of the way we do government in this country and yeah. you know there's a lot of different theories on how best to do that yep um mm-hmm. we'll get away from the serious shit here for people that are watching along live thank you very much for tuning in um we do a bonus show of jankum called talking shit which we're about to jump into mm-hmm. um if you want to watch that you can catch full version of uh or full episodes of the jankum podcast ad free on locals and then the talking shit portion the bonus show is only available on locals uh you can go to my page at uh joshdenny.locals.com here's the address there for people who uh aren't listening and are only reading this podcast i don't think that's a thing <laughs> but um you go to joshdenny.locals.com you can get full episodes of this show ad free as well as the bonus show talking shit um with mike keegan and this listen this is always good stuff with fat guys we'll talk about how many times mike shit his pants we'll ask him about the shittiest things he's ever done uh it's a fun game we play with all of our guests it's only available on our locals page uh before we get out of here mike anything you want to plug for the people uh so they can come find you uh you can just find me on facebook i'm usually uh usually every thursday night and uh sunday night i'm at governor's comedy club in levittown long island and um on october 22nd I have my own show there called Mike Keegan and Friends. We do it once a month, October 22nd is the next one. You can go on govs.com for tickets. Nice. I got to make it out there for one of those. Yeah, dude. I, I would love to have you close out one of, my, one of the shows there. It would be, it would be a blast, man. Yeah. I, got, I got some new stuff. Some new stuff I finalized that I started working on with you when I was out there. So, uh, yeah. you know, it's, I've gotten, I've, I've worked it in a little bit since then. I'm kind of excited for you to see it. Awesome. Yeah, man. I can't wait to get you out here. We'll do it at some point when the travel's not so crazy. And, yeah. you know, I, and I, I, I've got some other stuff out in New York, other business. I got to line up out there as well. So maybe we can, maybe we can set it to where it all synchronizes perfectly, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's the idea. All right. So uh, we'll get out of here and uh, we'll jump into the bonus show for people who want to uh, go catch that on locals. Uh, otherwise, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thanks, guys. I'm a little, 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 I'm a